Yeah, we're training. This is my go-to green smoothie. I grab my ice pack. Can you say muscle after? Do you have any advice for younger dancers dealing with injuries? Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. So this vlog is basically a dance injury recovery day in my life. I'm going to talk to you beautiful people about how my body is feeling and what my recovery plan looks like. Also, you peeps have been sending in lots of questions on my Instagram asking me about dance injuries in general. So yeah, I'm going to be answering a lot of those questions as well in this video. So I am heading off to the physio and then I'm going directly to the gym. Just quickly showing you what I'm going to wear. Just a simple black sports bra, my Reebok shorts. And then I got this in H&M the other day. It is the first time I bought myself a long sleeved sports crop top. I liked it there. I don't know how much I'm going to like it at the gym. I guess we'll see. But yeah. This is the vibe for the day today training. I am currently going to the physio approximately three times a week. And when I'm there, I normally get massage therapy, electrostimulation, and gym training. And I must say that the combination of these three things is really, really helping me out a lot. Hi again, I am back from physio and back from the gym. Training went really, really well. I trained for approximately two hours today, which is good because next week I'll slowly start going back to work. So I need to get fit again. <laughs> also because the past three weeks, I basically have done little to nothing because A, I was injured and I shouldn't have done. <laughs> much more than what I did and B I had so many essays to hand in for university but ah, somehow I managed to hand in like a 25 page word document <laughs> that I needed for my RPL which is recognition of prior learning it was comprised of two essays a 5,000 word essay and a 3,000 word essay plus the form and everything anyway it doesn't matter it's in and then on Monday I had to hand in another 2000 word essay but I managed, I succeeded, I'm very happy and now I can focus on getting back to dancing, getting back to work so yeah we're training, I have a new tape from the physio like my muscle is getting better by the day like I am really surprised by how fast it is improving because compared to my previous injury which took forever I mean of course it's a completely different injury before I had a fracture stress fracture of my left tibia and then I had a cartilage damage in my left tibia so yeah like those kind of injuries take way longer than a muscle rupture but muscle tear uh can you say muscle rupture? I'll check that out. Anyway, the leg is reacting great. I wasn't expecting that. My problem now, like for me, I am the kind of person that really wants to push to get back at things. Like I am very determined, <laughs> but I need to be held back. <laughs> like my doctor and my physio and my boss now know me. So they're like, we have to hold you back and I also need to hold back myself when I am training so I can be healthy and fit in the long run not rush to get back on stage fast and then get injured again we don't want that do we so yeah but things are good I am in a really good mood and in a good mental state as far as my injury goes because I can see really progress by the day so I am heading off to the kitchen I'm going to make myself a protein green smoothie I actually already had breakfast before going to the physio but I trained for two hours and I'm hungry again now so yeah I'm going to make myself a little snack and we can have a catch-up date as I'm having my smoothie and by the way yes I really enjoyed training in my new crop top I honestly didn't know if I would like it because I'm normally not used to 
train in a crop top I thought I disliked them but actually I don't so I discovered something new and yeah enough blabbering I'll meet you in the kitchen bye my smoothie is ready this is my go-to green smoothie I'm basically making one every single day at the moment but I don't think I shared my recipe with you so in case you want to try it out this is just like a big big handful of baby spinach one apple I use a granny smith apple they're my favorite one banana then I use whichever milk I have open in my fridge so today it's oat milk but I tend to prefer soy milk because it is richer in protein and then I added one one tablespoon of protein powder, one teaspoon hemp seeds, one teaspoon flax seeds, two teaspoons of chia seeds, and yeah, I just blended it. It's my favorite smoothie recipe. So as I'm going to enjoy this, I'm actually going to ice my leg. I'm not icing it, not even as close as as much as I was doing a couple of weeks ago like yeah I would say up until two weeks ago I was icing it every two hours for like 20 minutes now I'm just icing it after I get back from the gym I'm gonna show you how I do that but it's pretty straightforward what I do is I grab my ice pack and then I laid two cushions because it's better for me to keep the knees slightly bent then I grab a good old kitchen towel <laughs> like this because you shouldn't put the ice directly on your leg and then I just roll it inside and after that I just lay my leg on top of the ice so I will be icing my leg for 20 minutes and in the meantime I'm going to watch one episode of <laughs> this random Netflix series I found it's called Superstore I was really 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 busy and overloaded with uni stuff so when I took like a little break I wanted to watch something easy that didn't require too much concentration or too much of a complex plot line which I normally love but I was looking for something really chill and fun and this series Superstore popped up and <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm gonna give it a go and I don't think it's amazing, but by now I really care about the characters. I think it's good sometimes to watch something lighthearted, like not always like these big, deep, meaningful dramas, which are great, but I think in life you need also lightness. At least I'm a strong believer of that. So that is what Superstore is to me. After that, I am going to jump in the shower and then before having lunch, I would like to get a little bit of work done for my YouTube channel because I've really been focusing on university with all the assessments and then like most of my day, of course, is spent on recovering from my injury, but I'm really sorry I have been slacking with my YouTube channel, but now that the exams are over I mean I still have one essay to hand in on the 10th of December but it is the 17th of November so we have plenty of time and I already wrote the draft for it so yeah I'm just waiting for my supervisor to let me know areas I should improve yeah that's what we're gonna do and I'm also going to answer the questions that you beautiful people have sent me on my Instagram I asked you guys if you had any questions for an injury Q&A and I received many I was really <laughs> surprised like I didn't expect to receive more than two or three but yeah I'm going to answer your questions and that is all for now I just jumped out of the shower and I wanted to give you a quick little overview of what I'll be wearing today so I threw on this sand color tracksuit from H&M Basics it's really super cozy and warm I love it and as I'm just going to be spending the afternoon at home hanging out with you and answering the questions you've been sending me on my Instagram page I thought it was just ideal for the occasion so yeah going to get some work done before lunch but I'm starting to get hungry again I'm so hungry today. I don't know why <laughs> okay bye so although it was already kind of late I still managed to do some work at my desk which was mostly checking out my planner and organizing some doctor's appointment and university stuff I then moved on to edit the YouTube video that will come out after this one which is a how to sew and break in a new pair of point shoes
whilst I was doing that I realized that I had totally forgotten to put on my compression tights so I proceeded to pop them on which is actually way harder than it sounds. And last, but definitely not least, I made myself a yummy vegan homemade roasted tomato and white beans soup. It is 5 p.m. and it's already nighttime here. The days are getting really short, which is so sad. <laughs> but yeah, of course, winter is coming, so I guess we have to get used to the short days. But it's time for us to do a little catch up and a Q&A. I asked you on my Instagram stories if you had any questions concerning my injury or dancing or injuries in dance and I got quite a few responses so yeah I'm going to answer your questions now. Question number one. Are you going to start dancing again after the injury? Yes, absolutely, 100%. I'm going to go back to dancing as soon as possible. I really can't wait to get back to work so. Yes. Question number two. When will you be able to dance again? Okay, I will be able to start taking class again next Monday. So on Monday the 22nd of November, I will start taking class with my company again, but I won't be working full time until the 3rd of January. Question number three. Are you scared to go back to dancing full time? Yes and no. Like, if I were to start dancing eight hours again tomorrow, yes, I would probably be scared because I don't feel fit and my muscle doesn't feel ready to sustain an eight hour dancing workday yet. But my doctor has drafted like a schedule for me to get back to full time training and working, and that is over the course of six weeks starting from the 22nd of November so yeah I'm confident that following the plan by the beginning of January I will be totally fine and ready to dance full-time again. Question number four what have you been doing while home sick? So actually I have been studying <laughs> all the time as people that have been following me for a while know I am now a student at Middlesex University London I am enrolled in a part-time long distance master's degree in dance technique pedagogy so I had to hand in like originally I thought it was going to be four essays but then I spoke to my supervisor and I could write longer essays instead of shorter essays like I had to arrive to a 10,000 word count for my RPLs, recognition of prior learning. So yeah, I, I wrote three essays in total. I wrote a 5,000 word essay, a 3,000 word essay and a 2,000 word essay and I handed them in between last Friday and the past Monday. So that's what I've been up to, writing a lot. <laughs> like I can't even remember when I have written so much in such a short amount of time. Like. I managed to write all three essays in nine days, which is insane. I mean, I had been studying for a while, so I had all my references and my readings done, so I knew what to write about, but yeah, it was very intense. Also because the last essay I wrote was in 2012, so nine years ago. <laughs> way to go <laughs> but I managed and I feel so proud of myself for this I didn't think I would be able to write so much in such a short amount of time and I hope I pass this I still don't know I will only find out on the 28th of January question number five 
what makes you still want to dance after your injuries? I don't really know how to answer this question. I, in general, still, like, although I'm 35 and have, have been dancing professionally since 2011, so it's 10 years that I'm working professionally, I am still in love with my job and I love dancing and I don't feel like this injury that I had also the previous one are enough for me to say okay this is enough for me I am moving on to the next thing like I genuinely love my job and I feel I can still give a lot to my job and that I can learn a lot from it so like I'm not at all in the mindset yet to think okay I'm gonna stop dancing like I, I really 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 want to get back on stage like that is my goal at the moment question number six how many injuries did you have in your dance career so i'm going to assume that you're asking like major injuries because like minor injuries i have the feeling dancers have all the time every day um but like major injuries that have taken me off dancing rehearsals and performances I would say in 10 years I have had three major injuries. One was in 2012. I had a chondritis of my right knee and I couldn't walk properly for three months so I was three months off training and performing and that was my first big injury and it was the hardest in a way for me psychologically because I had just started my dance career and I didn't know how people would treat injuries like from a professional point of view I was scared that people would think okay she won't be able to dance anymore and like that was insane but I really felt this pressure when I was young and I was starting so yeah chondritis in 2012 then I didn't have any other major injury until 2019 when I had a stress fracture of my left tibia which we then found out was also linked to a cartilage damage of the distal part of the tibia and because it took so long to figure out what I really had that injury kept me nine months off dancing but at the same time timing wise it overlapped with the beginning of the panoramic so I got injured in December 2019 and then in February all theaters were closed basically until now so they started opening different nations different uh, periods but my theater like officially reopened this season so in September so yeah I was off for nine months but I didn't miss out on so much because nothing was really going on in the world in general in that period so I was lucky that I really had time to get back on my feet and get stronger and retrain and once they figure out what I had which was this cartilage damage that had caused the fracture then I got hyaluronic acid injection in my joint and after that like a couple weeks later I could dance again so that's what happened like and sometimes you really have to also be patient to figure out what is going on like medicine is not a direct immediate precise science every injury in every human being is different so of course it's hard also for the doc doctors to really figure out what you have and then to treat it but I'm really really happy with the doctor that has been following me for that injury and now with this tear of my medial gastrocnemius and yeah so my third injury this one now in October of 2021 and it a uh, torn muscle and for the moment it has kept me off dancing for four weeks and I'll start training again after four weeks but after these four weeks I have six weeks to get back to working 100% question number seven are you taking any supplements to recover faster? So I am gonna answer this question, but like I'm just talking for myself. I'm not advising anyone to do the same or the uh, this is what you should do if you're injured. Like this is what I'm personally doing and what is working for me, but I'm not a doctor or a health practitioner. So I'm not trying to give anyone advice. I'm just gonna answer the question as far as I'm concerned. Yes, I am taking multiple supplements at 
this moment actually I'm taking protein powder because I'm healing a muscle injury and protein is really really important for the muscle function basically I'm putting a scoop of protein powder in my smoothie every day like <laughs> that is the amount of protein powder I'm taking like it's not too much like actually on the package I have it says two scoops a day and I'm just having one uh, on top of that I'm taking magnesium supplements and calcium supplements Yes, and I always take uh, B12 supplements and a multivitamin supplement. Question number eight. Are you setting your own recovery plan alone? Um, no, <laughs> absolutely not. I have no preparation to do that. And if you are injured, please, 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 by all means, do not make your own recovery plan. Go to a doctor, go to a physio, like ask for their advice and follow what they're saying like as dancers we know our bodies well which is great but we don't know that much about injuries please 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 go to your doctor and ask for advice question number nine will you be able to do everything you you used to do before i really 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 hope so as far as functionality goes the physio told me that i already have basically 100 percent of the functionality back so that is amazing but i still haven't tried going on relieve going on point shoes hopping jumping skipping we are hoping everything will be fine and everything looks like it should be 100 percent fine and that i should be able to do everything both my doctor and my physio believe that and I also believe that and my leg looks really really good at the moment but I guess we'll have to wait and see but everything looks good as far as that goes. Question number 10. How are you feeling about your injury psychologically? So um so far quite good because all of my university actually thanks to my university i didn't really have the time to sit and think too much about the injury like i had to be home and like rest as much as possible my leg but i haven't rested my mind like i was writing day and night no, not day and night but i was studying 11 to 13 hours a day for the past 10 days 11 days so i didn't really have much time to be on the low side as far as my injury goes but also i thank god so far i didn't have any reason to be on the low side as far as my injury goes because it's going really well like also today the physio told me that every day i go there like he can see the improvement so as everything is going well i'm good so far so good okay i think i'm gonna change angle just to <laughs> spice things up because this has been rolling for 20 minutes now here <laughs> question number 11 how can you prevent dance injuries? So this is a very, very, very good question. Some injuries you can't prevent. Like it really depends on the kind of injury. Like there are some injuries that you of course can prevent. Like it is really, really important to warm up before you take class, before you rehearse, cool down after you've rehearsed or after you've taken class, like not to skip on those things. Get enough rest, drink enough water, make sure you are eating a healthy, wholesome diet that is going to support all the nutritional needs that you need as a professional dancer or as a dancer in training like make sure that you're eating well all these things can prevent injuries going if it's available to you to a physio regularly if you have even a beginning of a pain it is good just to check that it's not going to develop in something worse if you have any pain like ask your doctor if it's good to heat it or to keep the body part warm like there are a lot of things that you can do stretching but sometimes like you have working accidents like you can slide or trip I don't know and of course you can't prevent those kind of injuries and a lot a lot a lot of injuries professional dancers have are actually overwork injuries and mine is kind of in between an overwork injury and an accident because I was doing like we were working a lot and we were doing like a lot of jumps hopping sequence and like everything happened so fast so it's not that clear for me but I kind of slid 
and as I was trying to hold myself like my muscle tore in a jumping sequence so I couldn't prevent this kind of injury really but yeah all the things that I said above are great ways to take care of your bodies and try to prevent an injury but probably the most important one I mean stretching cooling down warming up very important but I think beyond this as well is getting enough sleep resting recovering take days off like you can't dance seven days a week like that is not healthy for your body i personally believe like if you can two days a week off from work from dancing full time is great even if you are training to become a professional dancer try to get the weekend off for your body i really 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 believe that is important question number 12 are you eating differently to recover from your injury? Um, well, I mean, specifically to recover from the injury, I'm just trying to be aware that I am eating enough protein because I know that that is really really important for the muscle to recover and repair so as far as changing diet in order to recover from the injury I would say that, that is the only change shift I made in my diet but because the last time I was injured again now I've been off for four weeks previously I've been off for nine months and in nine months I gained 10 kilos and I really don't want that to happen again so I am really taking care of what I eat when I like lost weight after my previous injury I went to a dietitian and she gave me a diet plan for when I was not training and I'm trying to follow that and I'm using chronometers to track my macros just to make sure that I'm eating enough of everything and following the dietitian's diet plan. I want to make this very clear, I'm not trying to lose weight, I'm trying to keep my weight stable and not gain weight because of course when you pass from dancing eight hours a day to not dancing at all, you can't eat the same things, the same amount, like you can eat the same things but not the same amount of things, of course you're gonna gain weight and again my objective is not to lose weight but just to maintain my weight my healthy weight which I'm happy with <laughs> question number 13 were you ever injured before is this your first injury no as I already replied in some I don't remember which question above this is not my first injury professionally I have been injured three times this is my third professional injury over the arc of 10 years but I was injured actually also before that when I was 16 I hurt my knee playing volleyball in school <laughs> so it was another um, sports movement related injury how many hours do you train a day so I'm going to assume that is a question for how many hours I train a day now I just started training again at the physios so I'm going to the physios gym every day and I'm training one and a half to two hours every day and then yesterday I started practicing yoga out of the boot for the first time so I'm slowly starting to go back to a flow strictly following all the guidelines that I've been given from my doctor and my physio. So I would say somewhere between 2 hours 15 minutes to 2 hours 45 minutes five times a week, not Saturday and Sunday. That was my weirdest answer to a question ever. Question number 15. Did they put you in a cast? No, they did not put me in a cast. I was just given a boot called Bakuped, which I only had to use to train in the acute phase of the injury. Okay, I think I'm gonna change angle again. So we're going back to the beginning. I feel like I like it more than this. Question number 16. Are dance injuries common? <sighs> I don't know how to answer that. Um, I want to say yes. Question number 17. When will you be able to go back on stage? So I won't be able to go back on stage until I'm not 100% back to work from a legal point of view. And that will be on the 3rd of January. So 
I will be able to go back on stage from the 3rd of January onwards. The first premiere that my company will have after the 3rd of January is on the 22nd of January. I don't know if I will be performing in it because my boss is really mindful about me taking all the time I need to recover so he's not gonna push me to be back on stage immediately. So I guess we shall wait and see but from a legal point of view from the 3rd of January onwards I will be able to go back on stage. We shall see when that actually is going to happen. I think the earliest would be the 22nd of January. Question number 18. Why do you do yoga in a boot but don't wear it the rest of the time? I guess this question is based on my last video because I was only wearing the boot to do yoga but I was not wearing it the rest of the day and I'm not and I was not. Well I spoke to my doctor and she told me that I should use it only when I'm doing exercise movements that would be risky for my muscle in the acute phase and as I was sitting at my desk studying <laughs> like 80% of my awake time, I didn't feel the need to put my leg in the boot and the doctor supported that. So I was just wearing it for training when I was practicing just to be extra safe. But now the acute phase is over. It's been over three weeks since the injury. So like now I'm good to go without the boot. I'm still wearing the compression tights though. And before I had a shorter one, but then my fidget told me it's better to have a longer one so now I'm wearing a compression tight that goes all the way up to my thigh and it's really really helpful like between that and the taping that my physio gave me I feel my leg is really supported and I'm really taking very very good care of it. Question number 19. How long will you need crutches? So I'm in a tricky situation because actually I can walk totally fine at the moment but my physio wants me to use crutches outdoors for another week when I'm not in a safe place like if I'm at home or in a closed space where I know no one's going to bump into me or anything like that or rush me I am allowed to be without crutches but when I'm outdoors it's not because I can't walk without crutches but because I'm not yet 100% so so it's more for people to be careful and mindful around me and also I shouldn't walk with steps that are too long because that could also not be great for my legs so having the crutches for another week helps me with that so I will be using crutches until the 21st of September outdoors of November sorry <laughs> I'm not going to be using crutches anymore. Question number 20. What do you do not to get bored at home? Well, <laughs> as I told you before, like I didn't really have time to get bored. I was studying all day long, basically all the time I was stuck at home until last Monday. And then yesterday was my first day of a breather and I finally like deep cleaned the house because I couldn't before for two reasons. First, it wasn't good for my leg and two, I didn't have the time. So yesterday, my first day off, I deep cleaned the house <laughs> and then I hanged out with some of my friends which also I didn't have the time to see before because of my injury so honestly I didn't really have time to get bored and today I decided to hang out with you with this day in my life so I was busy and I did not get bored which kept me in a good mind space so yeah okay last question which movements hurt at the moment knock on wood no movement that I am doing is hurting, which is amazing. I do not feel pain doing any of the movements that I'm allowed to do. So of course, I'm not jumping, hopping, skipping, running, anything like that. I'm not going on the relevé. I'm not going on point shoes. So excluding these things, everything that I can do is thankfully pain-free. I just rolled out my mat and we're going to attempt a little very, 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 very 
<laughs> very adapted yoga practice i still can't do so many things but i think it's really good for me to slowly get back on track with things so we're gonna attempt that and hopefully all goes well <laughs> So meeting Zach. Hello. We're having dinner at the Greek restaurant. Yeah. And yeah, that's my evening. See you later. Hi everyone. It is currently around 11:30 p.m. and I just got back home i am slowly trying to head towards ending this vlog but i still had a few more questions to answer from the q a that i started before so i thought i would answer the last questions before i head off to bed question number 22 do you feel like this injury is a consequence of the previous one? I mean, it's hard to tell. I, I honestly wouldn't be able to give an answer to this. I asked the doctor and she told me that no, not really. Like, they are two unrelated injuries and also I was healthy and back dancing full time for a year and a half and I had no problem, no pain at all. Thanks to my previous injury, that was a bone problem this is a muscular problem so no they seem completely unrelated like the only thing they have in common is they're both in the area of my left ankle but yeah like one is not a consequence of the other question number 23 did you feel the injury coming? No, like a muscle tear is a really sudden and immediate thing. Like it came out of nothing and I was warm. Like on that day specifically, before going to work, I had done a 45 minute yoga practice for myself and I had taught a 45 minute yoga class. So I already warmed up for an hour and a half before going to class. Then I took a one hour and a half class and then I was rehearsing for two hours before the muscle tear happened so I was definitely warm, I was definitely prepared, I had slept seven and a half hours the night before, I was hydrated and I had no pain whatsoever since a year and a half in that area so like I had no way to see that coming so yeah it's just one of those things that happen out of nothing. Question number 20 for how much do you train on average at work so at the moment i am still not back to work as i said before in the first half of this q a i'll start working again on monday the 22nd of november but normally when i'm healthy i work seven to eight hours a day question number 25 and the last question for this q a which was a really really long one do you have any advice for younger dancers dealing with injuries yes <laughs> So um, the first advice I would give to a younger dancer dealing with an injury is be patient. As dancers, we feel like, or athletes in general, I think, we feel like we can rush through healing times faster than someone that is not a professional dancer or dancer in training or a professional athlete. There is this 
um, common perception that we can rush through things and in a way it's true like we will build up muscle mass back probably earlier than someone that doesn't have such a level and history of training however that doesn't mean that the actual injury heals faster than a person that is not a professional dancer or athlete so even if you feel <laughs> and it's frustrating i know i've been through it i am going through it now the doctors and physios are holding you back and you feel like you could move through things way faster and you're feeling good because for example now i'm feeling i think i'm feeling good but i know i have still an open tear in my leg it's just i can't see it or feel it and functionally i can do everything but like if i'm going to rush back to training eight hours a day i'm gonna get injured like in the next two or three days and I really don't want that to happen. I think it is very important to see things in perspective in the long run and not just short term. If you want to be a dancer in the long run, take care of your body. They often make us feel that dance career is really short and you have to be ready now in that moment and if you're not, like, you lost your chance. But dancing professionally is a long journey and you have one body only with which to work so take very 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 good care of it and don't rush through the injuries really like that is my biggest biggest advice all right so that was the end of this dance injury q a i hope i answered most of your questions and if you have any other question for me please reach out to me either on Instagram and ask me anything you want or as an alternative, if you don't want to go on Instagram, you can also just leave me a question down here in the comment section below and I will either answer immediately down here or I will answer in my next Q&A. And I'm also going to wrap up this daily vlog. I enjoyed hanging out with you today. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me. Thank you so, 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 so much for making it until this point of the video it means a lot to me i'm really really appreciative if you haven't already please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up i will see you all in a future video good night